the Johnson's Wax Program with Fibber McGee and Molly. <laughs> Johnson's Wax and Johnson's Self-Polishing Glow Coat present Fibber McGee and Molly with Bill Thompson, Gail Gordon, Lee Benadares, and me, Harlow Wilcox. The script is by Don Quinn and Phil Leslie. Music by the King's Man and Billy Mills Orchestra. <laughs> to be really handsome, wood surfaces must be cleaned and they must be wax polished too. That's the real secret of bright, beautiful floors. And that's why so many women use Johnson's Liquid Cleaning and Polishing Wax. There's a magic dry cleaning ingredient in this wonderful floor polish. A quick application, a few strokes of your cloth, and dirt is whisked away. Then you just zip over the surface with a dry cloth, and that clean surface takes on a sheen, a fine gloss that only a true wax polish can give it. Later, if some spots get worn by very heavy use, you can touch them up in a few seconds. A new application of Johnson's Liquid Wax blends in perfectly with the rest of the surface. Ask for Johnson's Liquid Cleaning Wax tomorrow. Your floor will be cleaned, polished, protected. No other wax gives you exactly the same dry cleaning, bright polishing action. Did you ever get friendly with somebody on a vacation trip and maybe pop off a little bit about your 40-acre estate, your large staff of servants, your hot and cold swimming pool, your swollen bank account, your this and your that. And then get a letter from that somebody a year later saying he was coming to visit you. Well, that's the problem Mr. McGee is taking up with his wife right now as we join River McGee and Molly. Oh, this is murder, kiddo. I really got myself in a jam this time. Old Harry is due at the Union Station at 2 p.m. That gives me three hours to make a millionaire out of myself. You know, dearie, I thought at the time you were spreading it on a little thick to Mr. Sedgwick. Yeah. You can get yourself into more spots than a flea on a leopard. Yeah. <laughs> well, my gosh, how did I know I was ever going to see the guy again? And he was pretty nice to us up there in Toronto, you know. Oh, yeah. Least I could do was make him think he was entertaining a big shot. Well, you didn't have to go quite so big, dearie. Oh, well, I was... I managed to keep a straight face when you told him about your private trout stream with the sunburn lotion mixed in to keep the trout from getting speckled. (laughs) Oh, well... And I never lifted an eyebrow when you described your private landing field with the 14 runways and personal wind tunnels. Yeah, but gee whiz, you You've got a wind tunnel, all right. (laughs) Running from the bottom of your head to the top of your chest. Yeah. Heavenly days, the way you piled it on. Yeah, I know, I know. I was a chump. But what am I going to do now? Old Harry is due in a couple of hours. If he sees the way we really live after what I told him, I'm I'm afraid he'll think I'm a kind of a four-flusher. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, seriously, I, I'm afraid he might. <laughs> <laughs> Well, as I always say, sweetheart, if you insist on painting fancy pictures, you must expect to get stuck with some wet brushes. <laughs> How many rooms did you tell him our house had? Fourteen, I think. <laughs> well, old Harry just had an 11-room house, and I didn't want to make him feel underprivileged, so <laughs> I held it down to 14 rooms. I see. You may be a braggart, love, but you're a tactful braggart. How many cars are we supposed to have? Well, not counting the two station wagons, the Jeep, and the light truck I use on my golf course. (laughs) I think I said we had four Cadillacs, a Duesenberg, and hay. Yes? I wonder how much it would cost to rent the Whistle Vista Country Club for today. Oh. Yeah. We could take old Harry out there and tell him that was our house, see? This is Tuesday. Ladies' Day at the Country Club. Uh. There'll be 50 or 60 women sitting around. So what? I told Harry you entertained a lot. That makes it even better. Yeah, but how do you explain away the cigar counter and the magazine stand? <laughs> That's a cinch. I'll tell Harry I gave the magazine and cigar concession to a poor relative on account of he wouldn't accept any charity. I'll tell him that I fixed it up. Come in. Oh, Mayor Latrivia. Do come in, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. McGee. Hello, McGee. Hi, Latriv. Hey, what do you think are my chances for running the country club for the rest of the day? Very poor. Why, Your Honor? In the first place, it's ladies' day out there, and you'd have as much chance of yanking the club out from under them as I'd have of winning the National Open with a bent poker. (laughs) 
My gosh, it'd sure be perfect for my purpose. Tennis court, swimming pool, 18-hole course, pitch and putt, driving range, steam room, everything. I could sure make good old Harry with that setup. Am I, uh, am I late? Late for what, Mr. Mayor? I seem to have come in in the middle of the second act. I don't understand what's going on. Huh? Oh, 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 well, here's how it is, Tripp. Last year up in Canada, we met a nice guy named Harry, see? Entertained us all over the place. Hospitality coming out of our ears. He rolled out so many red carpets for us, I still got pink lint in my cuffs. <laughs> so? So to reciprocate in his own odd way, McGee told him about the McGee estate in Whistle Vista. All about our townhouse, country estate, private yacht, and a midget butler for guests who wanted a short beer before breakfast. <laughs> oh, my gosh, I had to be polite, didn't I? I didn't want Harry to think he was entertaining a couple of peasants, did I? Well, anyway, Your Honor, this man is due to drop in for a visit with us in the next couple of hours. Yeah. And here we are, in our little six-room mansion with the sweeping 72-inch driveway. <laughs> and if he doesn't care for hot buttered root beer, he'll have a very dry visit. <laughs> McGee, has Dr. Gamble ever checked you for hoof and mouth disease? <laughs> <laughs> hoof and huh? Every time you open your mouth, you seem to put your hoof in it. <laughs> Look, I have a good idea. Wait till I move the furniture back. A good idea in this house is going to crowd us a little. <laughs> What is it, Your Honor? Yeah, if you can get me off of this spot, kid, you're my friend for life. Threats will get you nowhere, McGee. <laughs> now, listen. I have only one Cadillac and no golf course and no swimming pool. But I have a ten-room house, a cook, and my man, Crevis, is quite satisfactory. Now, why don't you take over my establishment for the day to entertain your friends? Oh, McGee, this looks like the answer. Latrivia, oh. you're a man's man. Yeah. And I'm the man. <laughs> Thanks, old man. You've saved my bacon. Canadian bacon, that is. Well, if you're going to go the whole hog, you'll need it. <laughs> now, I'll tell Grimes, the cook, and Crevis, my man, that you are the master of the house and to treat you accordingly. You can trust Crevis not to let the cat out of the bag. Why not? I think it's more realistic if there are a few cats around. Guys, <laughs> we like cats. I had one once I just loved. A brown cat with a very short tail. A chocolate Maltese, I think he was. Uh, just wait a minute. When I said Crevis wouldn't let the cat out of the bag, I was only That's no way to a... keep a cat anyway, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> My goodness, the poor little thing will get claustrophobia. Don't let the Humane Society hear about you keeping your Siamese in a sack, Latriv. Keeping a puss in a poke is liable to get you a poke in the puss. <laughs> I tell you, I didn't creep a hat. Huh? A cap creep. Huh? I was merely saying that letting a bat out of crag, a uh, cat out of a bat, I don't even have a cat. Oh, you mean it's just a little kitten? Well, that's worse. That ain't good cat psychology, Latrib, keeping it in a bag like that. Make friends with it. Get him to love you. Then he'll stick by you through thick and thin, as long as the milk holds out. <laughs> when I had my... Oh, this is all a rot of luck. Huh? I mean, a lot of luck. When I said I kept a rat in a crag, yeah. a cat in a bat, a bag in a... Copper, a pip. This all started when I said Crevis wouldn't let the bag out of the... You said it was... I did not say that! It was you! 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 You who waved to the mayor, McGee. He's calling to you. <laughs> you your honor. You who? I was... We were talking... It wasn't the... Yes? I believe you wanted to borrow my home for the day? Oh, now, Mr. Mayor, after all, you're not going to renege just because... Gee, we were, were just having... kidding, Latrib. My gosh, after all, you... Be promised. quiet. Here are my keys. Oh. I'll let Grievous know you're coming. Oh, boy, thanks, kid. I'd like to tell you one thing about the house. Yes, Mr. Mayor. What is it, boy? The back stairs. Yeah. They're very steep and quite dark. Yeah. If you use them, McGee, I'd suggest you take a fast run at them with your eyes shut. <laughs> Good day. <laughs> Billy Nelson Orchestra and Far Away Places.
That's exciting, McGee. I just love railroad stations. Yeah. The hustle and the bustle and people coming and going. Did you see the beautiful new streamliner with the glass roof that just pulled out? Yeah, but I wouldn't ride or want to ride on that. How can you undress in an upper berth with a glass roof over you? <laughs> that ain't decent. My goodness, I never thought of that. Maybe they just have them over the observation. Say, is the train from Toronto on time? I don't know. I've been looking it up in this timetable, but I can't make anything out of it. Look, it says Toronto northbound, read up. Mr. Sedgwick will be southbound. Read down. Yeah. No, no, no. You don't have to bend way over to read it. Oh. Let's ask at the information booth right over here. That's a good idea. Hey, sis, we'd like some information, please. Well, sir, you may certainly have it because dispensing information is exactly what we're here for to serve the public dispensing information. What we'd like to know is... Believe me, you'd be surprised to know the kind of information we get asked about, too. You'd be surprised. Yeah. <laughs> One lady yesterday asked me what was the mean annual rainfall in southeastern Guatemala and also what was the length of Jerry Colonna's mustache. And I just had to look it up once because nine inches answered both questions. <laughs> nine inches. Yeah, but uh, what we wanted to find Another out... Another man said his daughter was home from school with a bad case of Dizzy Gillespie. And what did I recommend? Well, my goodness, I'm a Bebop fan myself, so just what was it you wish to know, sir? Just what? The train from Toronto. If it's on time, and what time is it? It's due any minute on track six, and the reason I know is because my sister Thelma's on it. She's oh. been in Toronto visiting some people. She just loves Toronto, and she spends a lot of time up there with the winter sports. And believe me, she knows them all, old and young. <laughs> Well, Toronto is a wonderful town. <laughs> yeah, Toronto is really a wonderful town. I'll bet Thelma. Oh, do you know Thelma? Oh. <laughs> well, now, isn't this a small world? She'll be here any minute, you know, because I'm meeting her, and she'll stay at my house because Your she didn't get me home. Now arriving on track six to Toronto and from Toronto and Brantford, Canada, which is the Canadian home of S.C. Johnson and Son, makers in addition to other fine and famous products of that wonderful Johnson's liquid wax. Heavenly days, that sounds like Mr. Wilcox. It can't be. It can, too. <laughs> in fact, it is. Try clean your floors with Johnson's liquid wax. Besides wax, it contains a powerful cleansing ingredient. Rub Johnson's liquid wax on lightly to loosen dirt and grime, then polish and see the beauty emerge under the shining protective coat of wax. Hey, waxy. Quiet, pal. <laughs> you don't have to re-wax your whole floor every time. Just touch it up where the wear's heaviest. In between waxings, a flick of a dust cloth keeps it shining and clean. So try Johnson's liquid wax from Racine, Wisconsin, and Brantford, Canada, where the Toronto one is just pulling in from on track six. <laughs> Mr. Wilcox ever got a position calling trains down here? I don't know, but it's no job for a guy with a one-track mind. <laughs> if they ever find out... How... Oh, hey, there's Harry. Hey, Harry. Hi, Harry. Yo, Mr. Sedgwick, here we are. It's us. The Rich McGee. Remember us, Harry? Ah, uh, yes. Hello there. Nice to see you again, Mrs. McGee. And you too, Quinton. Who too? Uh, he means me, Molly. Up in Canada, I had to admit my real name was Quentin. <laughs> Quentin Fownsby McGee the third. <laughs> that old family name, Harry. Yes, you must visit his ranch in California sometime, too, Mr. Sedgwick. Yeah. San Quentin, we call it. <laughs> but don't you go bother with formalities here, Harry. Everybody here just calls me Fibber. <laughs> On account of I'm a blue blood in every fibber of my being. Fiber. It is? <laughs> well, these ignorant peasants around here wouldn't know that. <laughs> Have a nice trip, Harry. Splendid, thank you. Very restful. Uh, you're both looking very well. Oh, we're fine, Mr. Sedgwick. Just fine. My housework keeps... Ah, <laughs> <laughs> my dear girl. You don't call ordering 13 servants around housework, do you? <laughs> I'm afraid she's kind of pampered, Harry. <laughs> but I'm glad you think I look well. Play a lot of golf, you know. A little big game hunting. Some yachting. Can't spell and spend all one time clipping coupons in a stuffy old bank vault, you know. <laughs> oh, that reminds me, McGee. I I'll be wanting to cash a check while I'm in town. Uh, of which bank did you say you were a director? Did he say he was a director of a bank, or would you direct you to a bank, Mr. Sedgwick? Because... <laughs> Always joking, eh, old girl? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with the Third National, Harry. Just keep my personal account there, though. 
Do my big banking in New York, naturally. In the corn exchange. <laughs> but if Mr. Sedgwick is a little short of cash, McGee, can't you tide him over with a few thousand or whatever you happen to have on you? Uh, oh, I, uh, well, 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 I don't need very much for now. Oh. Uh, Five hundred or so will carry me till I can make some banking arrangements. Five hundred? Why, you think we'd let our guests creep around this town with a paltry half a grand? <laughs> My gosh, what if you should want to buy something? <laughs> Ooh. But we can talk that over later, Harry. Let's get over to our townhouse and let you wash up a bit. What? Well, fine idea. Uh, but your townhouse? <laughs> I was looking forward to seeing your country estate. Uh, by the way, did the colonel's leg heal up all right? The colonel? His leg? Oh, oh, oh the colonel. Oh, oh, sure. He healed up real good, Harry. <laughs> He's gone back to Honolulu. He's in command of an airfield out there. A polo pony in charge of an airfield? <laughs> He must mean Colonel, your best polo pony, McGee. You remember? Oh, him. <laughs> I'd almost forgot about him, Harry, on account of... I gave up polo. Game's getting too common. Bad element creeping into it. Chaps with no background. They mean well, you know, but definitely not our type. Uh, your wife looks a little ill, McGee. We'd better be going. Oh, hello, oh, oh, Mr. Sedgwick. It's all the hot air in here that gets me down. <laughs> Bring Mr. Sedgwick's bag, dearie. What? I carry luggage? <laughs> I don't be ridiculous, old girl. I say, Porter, bring this luggage to the carriage entrance. That's where I have the Cadillac waiting, Harry. The Cadillac. Right this way. Bye, George, Harry. This is a fine day for us. Kingsman and Oklahoma. Oklahoma, where the wind comes sweeping down the plain. almost no time at all to us. I hardly know my way around it myself. <laughs> we spend so much time at our country place and our shooting lodge and on our yacht, you see. Uh... Ah, there, Crevis. We're home. I beg your... Oh, yes. Home. Yes, indeed you are, madam. Do come in. Crevis, this is Mr. Sedgwick from Toronto. Going to spend the day with us. Hello, Crevis. Uh, Mr. Sedgwick, a pleasure, sir. Your hat, sir? Certainly it's his hat. <laughs> Think he goes around stealing hats? Now, please. Please, McGee. Uh, Crevis, <coughs> will you get Mr. Sedgwick's bags and put the car in the garage? Immediately, madam. What room will Mr. Sedgwick occupy, madam? Oh, throw his stuff through the first door you come to upstairs, Crevis. My, I think Crevis is a wonderful name for a butler. Uh, uh, thank you, madam. However, that is not my real name. My real name is Butler. 
But how can you call a butler, butler? <laughs> Sounds uh, silly. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> uh, thank you, madam. Ah, isn't it nice to be home again? Do come into the drawing room, Mr. Sedgwick. Right in here, I think. <laughs> no, it's in here. <laughs> My goodness, this house is so big, I still get lost in it. Ah, lovely home, Mrs. McGee. And very handsomely furnished. Well, what's the use of having dough, Harry, if you don't fling it around a little? Easy come, easy go, you know. We're just sort of roughing it here, Mr. Sedgwick. Camping out, you might say. Yeah. Heavenly days, if we run out of rosewood to burn in the fireplace, <laughs> we just use plain old bird's eye maple or mahogany. <laughs> Solid, of course. No veneers. Well, this is a very handsome room. Uh, isn't that a Picasso up there over the fireplace? Huh? Oh, no, that's just an oil painting, Harry. <laughs> you got lots of them. I've been trying to get Da Vinci to paint my wife's portrait, but you know how these artists are. <laughs> Money means nothing to them. I'm sure it means nothing to Da Vinci. No. <laughs> He's as independent as a hog on ice. <laughs> well, Molly, how about serving some tea? Ring for the cook, will you? Where do I ring? Oh, stamp around under the coffee table. <laughs> Ought to be a buzzer there someplace. <laughs> you see, Harry, we usually have somebody standing around just to push buttons for us, but you know how the servant problem is. We are ah, there, Crevis. Uh, yes, sir. May I show Mr. Sedgwick to his room, sir? Uh, thanks, Crevis. Please do. Uh, yes, Crevis. And please tell the cook, uh, what's her name? His name is Grimes, madam. Oh, yes. Well, tell Grimes we'll have tea in here in 15 minutes. Certainly, madam. This way, please, Mr. Sedgwick. I took the liberty, sir, of laying out some fresh linen for you. <laughs> ah, good old crevice. He's really a treasure. I wonder where I found him. Have another cookie, Mr. Sedgwick, and some more sandwiches? How about some more tea? Oh, not a thing, thank you, Mrs. McGee. No, everything is delicious, but I'm simply stuffed. Oh, my, it's been a pleasant afternoon. I'll take some more cookies, Molly. Thanks. Yeah, it's been swell getting with you like this, Harry, old man, in our own mansion like this. <laughs> Pass Harry the dollar cigars, Molly. <laughs> Where's the cigars? The dollar cigars. Well, I would enjoy a good cigar. But well, I you... haven't seen them, McGee. Although we spend so little time here, I don't know where anything is. I don't even know where I am. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the dollar cigars? You know how servants are, Harry. Crevis keeps putting the dollar cigars in different places all the time. Well, maybe they're in this humidor here, McGee. Yes, yes, here they are. Good. <laughs> That's just like Crevis putting them in the humidor. <laughs> Help yourself, Harry. Take a handful. They're only a buck a piece. I'll stuff some in my pocket, too, for after all. <laughs> well, they look very good. Well, I just hate to think of leaving McGee, but it's getting close to 5 o'clock, and I'd better get ready to rush off. I wish you could stay, boy, but if you have to, you have to. Yes, I'd better be getting along. Well, I certainly want to thank you for the afternoon. It was grand. Well, we've enjoyed it, too, Mr. Sedgwick. <laughs> we do so little entertaining in this home. You said it. Well, I wish you could spend the night with us, Harry, but as long as you can't... Oh, hey, uh, where can I drive you? Well, I promised my wife I'd look up her cousin, McGee, and I suppose I'll have to spend the night at his house, whatever that is. Your wife's cousin lives in Whistle Vista? Oh. Do you have his address, Mr. Sedgwick? No, I'll get him at his office, though. He works at your city hall, some sort of official, I believe. The city hall? Say, we know a lot of people in the city. What's his name, Mr. Sedgwick? La Trivia. Uh, <laughs> La Trivia? <laughs> It's a small world, isn't it? And I just feel small enough to be comfortable in it. <laughs> oh, Crevis, the car, please. The Cadillac. get a clean floor, a beautifully polished and protected floor with Johnson's Liquid Cleaning and Polishing Wax. And here's a way you can get those advantages with unbelievable ease and speed. 
Use Johnson's Beauty Floor Electric Polisher. The Johnson Beauty Floor Electric Polisher brings out the luster in a few seconds. All you do is guide the polisher across the floor. The big whirling brush does all the work. Tomorrow, buy a Beauty Floor Electric Floor Polisher from your Johnson dealer. Or rent one by the day if you prefer. Glad that's over with, McGee. Where's the hatchet? The hatchet? Out in the garage. What you gonna do with the hatchet? Chop down that little cherry tree in the backyard. Huh? If I can be as deceitful as this on Washington's birthday, I might as well go all the way. I'm going to chop down the cherry tree and then say I didn't. Oh, oh yeah. Good night. <laughs> Good night, all. <laughs> Of Johnson's Wax and Johnson's Self Polishing Glow Coat, Racing Wisconsin and Brantford, Canada. Bring you Fibber McGee and Molly each week at this time. Be with us again next Tuesday night, won't you? Have you ever wondered whether the beauty of a blonde wood cabinet is worth the trouble of keeping it clean? Then use Johnson's Cream Wax. It cleans so quickly, dries so quickly, polishes so quickly that using it is practically as easy as dusting. Johnson's Cream Wax will both clean and polish a large blonde wood cabinet of yours in less than five minutes. And it dries completely. Contains no sticky oil to catch and hold dust. Think of the convenience of using a polish that makes cleaning and polishing all your furniture just about as easy as dusting. Then get Johnson's Cream Wax, the fastest wax polish you can buy. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. WMAQ and WMAQ-FM. NBC in Chicago.